Hey, Tinker Kit Challengers, this is Sam again, and we are going to be making an avatar for the month of March. So if you can see my little character here, these avatars are based off, well, this particular avatar is based off myself, and you're welcome to do the same, or you could take it into a whole creative direction, whatever you choose to do. Now, uh, in this tutorial, I would go over how I made my particular avatar, I want you to challenge yourself and find something that works for you. Look through the Tinkercad library, see what works for your characters or your avatars. And once they are done, give me a holler and I will print them out for you. Just let me know what color you want. If you haven't joined the Tinkercad Challenge Classroom, the, the code is below on this image. If you have registered, um, you should, you should have registered for the Sticker Cat Challenge. Once you register, you'll get a code for the classroom. And uh, the class is just a one-time code enter. You only have to register once. The reason why I have this classroom is just so I can easily print out all your creations and download the, the proper files in order to do so. So if you would rather send me the files, you can export the files through Tinkercad and uh, I just need the STL file. You should see it's .stl. Send it to me via email and I will print it out that way. So below is my email as well as the Tinkercad classroom code. And I hope you enjoy this month of making an avatar. The challenge is to make an avatar. So if you've never heard of what an avatar is, it's a character that you would choose in a game that represents you or represents the main character. And I've done this lesson before with um, a middle school that I was substituting. So I wanted to show you where the lesson is. If you wanted to go about doing it this way, you can. Or... You just follow along and see what I come up with, and you can try the same thing. So I'm going to explore this idea with this month's Tinkercad Challenge. And here is a picture of something you could create. Um, but at the same time, if you want to print out something different, you could create whatever avatar you want to. So if you like certain characters, like I remember a student came up to me asked if he can create Bugs Bunny, and I thought that was a great idea. So that's something you can do with your challenge. I'm going to click new and let's get started. So once again, this is the home base work plane area. And as I was going along, I would just stick to pretty much the basic sh shapes menu there. This month, I want you to actually try the explore their menus of the shapes library. There are things uh, you could save, favorite. Um, so if I did have one favorite shape, I could constantly go back to. But there's some, like, you can technically make different machineries in here if you wanted to. So in the base, so in the shapes menu, there are different um, props that they have. So if you are someone that likes to play basketball, you can use a basketball prop for your avatar, like you create your own character. Um, here goes sports, so helmets, um, playground equipment, even fun toys, so like a bubble wand, a little toy sword. There's so many things in here that you can have fun with and create. Say you had a shirt on or something that maybe was a favorite sports you have and you wanted to use that. So like last time we explored making um, text with a keychain ring. Well, you can do rounding text here. So if you wanted to create a shirt, like I said, a shirt and add, this, add your sports on there, you can. Let's see what else we have in here. So let's do creatures and creations. Now this is probably the best starting point when it comes to different avatars. So even if you wanted to just take a step back and explore making your personal avatar using just this character, you can do that. So if you wanted to just take it, take it to an easy comfort level just to create yourself out of this avatar, you're welcome to do that. Okay. Or here's another one too. 
And here's another person. So these are already built people that, like I said, if you want to use that, you can. Or if you wouldn't even try to take one of these characters and make them, I will show you how you can go about creating a character like this. So you see, there are a few characters. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, if you see any of these characters you want to customize and add to your creation, you can do that. Right, right now I'm going to recreate this character so you can do that. You can find a character on there and just customize them. You can do that too. So once again, I always like to start with changing the file name. And I'm putting my initials because... I found out with all the um, printing out pieces, a lot of everyone pretty much named the files the exact same. So it's a lot easier just to distinguish everything when I'm downloading it with different file names. So, um, so let's start off with creating the body. So I, I noticed this particular body. I'm trying to zoom in a little bit. It looks like they beveled the, sh the shoulder area. So remember when I talk about bevel is rounding out the top and bottom of something. So we'll do that. I won't do, I'll probably do it just about the same. And it also looks like this body did not have a lot of size to it. So remember I am, I'm a f firm believer of adding a lot more sides to create a smoother sculpture of a body. <laughs> so that's why I have, all my sides are just completely up to the most of 64 segments. So that is also, if you if you have the bevel and you want to add more segments to round it out, you can do that. So I will do that as well. I don't know if they strictly stuck with cylinders. It looked like they did for this character. Let me try to move them over there. Trying to, trying to get everything right in the middle so you can see it. But it's kind of hard. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to do that with the character. I'm just going to duplicate the body for an arm piece, okay? You just hold down option, just drag it off, and that usually makes a copy of the exact same size. Now, this size, let's see what the size is. The size for this one is 20 by 20. I'll leave it like that. I, I like even numbers. I will take this one, maybe to five by five, just out of curiosity, see how small the arm will be. You know, it's not, it's not too bad. It's, it's not a bad size. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll put it up to a, a six, but overall, I think that's a good size for an arm. So if you want to keep it as a five, go right ahead. And what I'm doing is focus on the arm and I'm just going to slide it into the body. So that's the thing about Tinkercad. When you're building a whole sculpture of something, it doesn't, there's not like a sticking point. What you can do is after you put something together, you can always group them and then that will make the body. That's like the glue. So if you group it, it's like gluing all the pieces together. And we will do that after. So I'm going to just use my arrow keys just to Push them on in there, pull the arm up just a little bit. I don't want to pull them up too far that it goes to the top of the shoulders. I'm sure now you realize that I'm not 100% following what this character is. I want, to, I want to make it a little different. I want to customize in my own way. And when you're doing this, uh, try out the same thing. Try to pose the character. So I got one arm going. I want to keep these arms together. So I will group the two arms together. And I'm going to just duplicate and move this arm off. And I'll show you a little trick that's kind of easy to give you like a nice pose. So I'm rotating it and I'm going to take this arm. Okay, so that's something that's easy. There's, it's a quick pose, uh, hand on the hips, wave, or just two hands on the hips to make you look like you mean business. And
Okay, so as you can see, the arms aren't lining up properly, but that is okay because how often do our arms line up to perfect hips to hand pose motion? <laughs> I'm going to group these and move the body up and I'm going to do like uh, much like how this person used like a different piece for the I guess lower the like the hips area of the body I'm going to do the same thing so I will use it looks like they might have used um, maybe this half sphere I think they might use the half sphere I'm going to use let's see Today I'm doing a sphere. I'll do a sphere. This reminds me a lot of drawing and how when you're drawing, you should use circles for a lot of your things. Okay, for the sphere, once again, I'm going to up these steps to coincide with how smooth my chest piece, is, chest piece or upper portion of the body so that they look like they go together. No, like maybe there's a piece you know you are not going to move and nothing else is going to move with it. You can actually lock them. Now locking that means you cannot select anything. So if you see a, if you lock something and maybe you forgot, if you see a bold purple outline, that means the whole group or the that the single shape is locked. So you just all you have to do is just click it off and you can move everything again. So I have stuck with a lot of the basic shapes, and I said I wasn't going to. So let me see if there's something, a good set of legs in here somewhere. Actually, I like this. I like this. I like this. Now, if you wanted to cut the workload in half by cutting the avatars in half. Sounds creepy. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is you can always take one of the whole shapes, whether it be the square or the cylinder, and then you can always put it over these guys and make sure that the hole completely covers the piece you do not want to have. Okay, so make sure that the head's completely covered. Okay. Now I'm going to group this and I should just get a pair of legs left. There we go. So you see, there's some tips and tricks I'm giving you just for your avatars. I feel like this is going to be something more fun than anything. And look, I probably can even delete the hips, so I didn't have to do that. But I just want to show you how to connect different pieces to how to make what your avatar is going to look like. Okay. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. So far my avatar is looking good. So I'm just going to group everything. I don't want to move it anymore. So it is fine where I want it to be. I don't see anything particular I like. So I'm going to still just stick with um, the basic shapes. I pulled out the tube and I'm taking the tube and I'm putting it back. I'm putting it up here. Once again, I'm making sure I up the sides. I'm going to zoom in. Everyone zoom in, look for this little square. It zooms in strictly on what you selected. So the reason why I like the tube is it, I feel like it's a lot easier to control um, when it comes to resizing stuff because all you do is drag the radi radius. You don't have to drag the rest of it. So that works for me. That's why I like it. I'm going to keep doing it that way. And then it's also easier to, uh, if you want to change it later with the head, it's a lot easier to control that way too. So you don't have to keep dragging the white squares up back and forth. Got my neck done. Now I'm going to add the sphere. I'm not going to group the neck just yet. I'm going to wait till after I get the head done. Once again, steps, putting, putting it all the way up there. Now hair, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> 
So what's when I did this with the kids, um, a couple of them decided to do hair like this. Like they just went the scribble tool, just did a bunch of scribbles. Scribble tool is nice, but at the same time, if you don't have like a drawing pen you're using with a mouse, it's a little more uh, harder to maneuver. So say if I wanted to just use the tree as a hair, Tinker Kid's all about getting creative and you don't have to worry about it looking like a tree because when it prints out, you're not going to be able to tell. It kind of looks like a hat too if you want to just keep it as such and it can either be hair, it could be a hat. I brought a hat sphere and I put it on top of my head and I duplicated the hat sphere and I mentioned before about the arrow being down. So in this case, the arrow to move the shape up and down is down here. Instead, I'm going to try to make this so that rotate this way and there we go there's here's one half of my hair uh, i'm going to duplicate this again and then i'm going to do the back that would be the back half of my hair Okay, so I'm going to group all of this, got my head ready. So remember when you group it, it's going to turn into uh, one solid color. So I'm just going to group all this and just change the colors. So now I got to figure out what I'm going to do for my eyes. I'm just going to do, let's see, eyebrow, let's see, eyebrows. So shape generators, this is actually pretty neat. There are some shapes, uh, much like the text tool, where you can just, sorry, where you can just uh, change the size of certain things. So like this bent pipe, for example, you can change how it, if you could see that. So now you can see all the corners, it looks like a hexagon, or you can make it look like a square. So I think I want to use this for I think I want to use this for my eyebrows. So you can see it right. I'm moving the outer pipe width. I'm going to change the wall thickness. That shouldn't really matter. That's just whatever's inside. So let's see if I can zoom in a little more. So right now the wall thickness is to its max bent angle. Now this is interesting. So now I could choose how I want to change the bend angle. So that would give me kind of like how I want to arc my arch my eyebrows. All right, I like this. I think I'm gonna stick with this. I'm trying to play with the diameter, see if I wanna change anymore. Or the bend angle. Just gonna make it a circle. I think I will just have this. Okay, now I gotta get it up to my face. Uh, let me do nose first. So I want to just do a simple nose. I'm not going to get too realistic with this. Like I'm already making a lot of realism pieces to this. So I'm just going to bring, I just pulled out the cone shape and I'm just going to bring the cone up and then resize it.
After I completed the nose, I decided I want to use the same shape for the eyes. So I duplicated the cone shape. I rotated it 90 degrees. And I adjusted the top radius to be the same size as the bottom radius. This to keep the eyes just symmetrical. Uh, I up the sides again to the most point, and then I adjusted the size of the eyes to be about 2 by 2.15. And I just duplicated the eye to match the second eye. Okay, one last final thing I want to add to print this out, I want to add a mouth. And after that, I think my character will be done. Maybe I'll add one, maybe one more accessory. Um, but overall, I really liked how my avatar turned out. The hair looks a little wonky, but I mean, that's something that's not going to be entirely perfect. And that's also up to your preference, how you want to do the hair and um, have all the pieces grouped together. So, um, let's see. Oh, so what you just saw was I had a duplicate and I don't think I've mentioned this before, but sometimes when you're doing this, you will randomly have duplicates of different shapes. And if you see that and the overlap, that just made you have a duplicate. So I just delete it. So if you do see that, then should delete because there's a lot less feedback for the printer to uh, like figure out to print. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the mouth. Um, try and see what shape I want to use. Mouth. I do want to use the Converse shoes. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting these shoes over on top of the other shoes. So now I'm just putting the shoes over the other shoes and I'm adjusting to see how the pants are gonna fit. So I'm just reevaluating the entire body and then just making sure I have everything where I want it to be. I realize I do not like how the legs are. They look very short to my body. So I'm trying to see what will work best. I think I need to get rid of the sphere at the bottom for the hips, which I will do. And then I'm going to move the body and make the legs longer and just try to fit the body pieces together better.
I found these neat glasses I want to add to my avatar, so I am just pulled them off from the Creatures and Characters menu and adjusted them to fit my face. And finally, going to find the lips. So I decided I was going to just pull out a heart shape and resize it to fit my face. I think this would, it's a creative solution because I could not find something that would work. And I think this would probably be the best option. So I'm just pulling it down and resizing overall the piece is about uh, two by three. Just making sure it fits on my face. When it comes to all these uh, different shapes, your shapes probably won't be the same size as mine. But overall, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, once again, explore creative freedom. Make your avatar the way you want to make it. And have fun. And let me know when you're ready. Send me an email and I will print them out. And just remember to give me a color for your print. Thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you.